Hi, Rick here from Marionville Models. This is a bit of a revisited video. In one of my earlier videos, the one where I show you how to fit the new 3D gimbal to the Phantom 2, it's required as part of the fitting to fit this little bit of kit here. Now, this is an anti-interference board. Cures various things from FPV interference to apparently jello uh, and other few other little issues sometimes people have experienced. Now, in my other video, I fit this in as per the instructions at the time. Now, DJI have amended the place where they fit it. Now, although in the other video, the location they fit it into is still completely valid and it's actually an easier place to put it in, in this video, I'm going to now show you where they recommend putting in. It's a little bit more work because you've got to reroute the Zemu's gimbal. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to re remove the top half of the body shell. So you'll need your uh, two mil Allen driver and you'll also need the small Phillips screwdriver. This is for taking off these small Phillips screws here. Now, I know a lot, of people, a lot of people have problems taking these off and they chew up very, very easy. Well, after a lot, I mean, a lot of digging about, I've eventually managed to find the screwdriver that fits them perfectly. And this is not a DJI screwdriver. It is, in fact, if I hold that up, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, it is actually a CK screwdriver and the number is a 48120. Uh, uh, if you Google that, you will find them. They're not cheap, they're about eight pounds, but I believe me, if you're gonna be taking your Phantom apart, this is the screwdriver that fits. And believe me, I have hunted high and low for this driver and this is the one. Now, as before, screws you'll be taking out are this one here, this one here, this one here, and finally, with your Phillips driver, this one here. These are your motor screws, leave them well alone. Okay, now we've got the lid off, uh, we're now in the belly of the beast. Now, before my other video, uh, the Zemuse cable, which is this grey one here, uh, the original instructions actually had the interference filter board actually mounted there, which basically means just moving uh, that cable to there and then there's a cable that goes from there to there. Now they've amended it, that's still a good place to do it and it's actually the easier place to put it but they've now amended it to move it over here and it will actually fit in here alongside. Now you probably noticed on the interference board that there's actually two small uh, mounting holes on it and that's basically what these were for. So the idea is in the new position, it's actually going to mount in there. Now, however, the Zemuse cable is actually over here. So one of the first things we're going to have to do is actually reroute the uh, Zemuse cable so it uh, cable so it comes out there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to loosen up the Zemuse cable. So the first thing you need to do, if you just turn it over and just untape these, Oops. Off. Now save these because you will need them later. So just loosen that off so that's now loose. Back over we go. Now the cable we're now going to cut, the tie wrap we're going to cut off is this one here. Now if we just, now be really careful because you don't want to snip any of the other cables. I have seen that happen. Now this is your AV cable so if you're not actually going to be fitting uh, you know, video transmitter just now, you can actually leave that in. Uh, but what we're going to be doing, we're going to be unplugging the actual Zenmuse cable. Now, you can go either way. Probably the easiest way to go is to actually pop that cable back through there. I found, if you actually pull it part of the way through, what you want to do is, you basically just want to take the cable and then kind of squish it like that to make it kind of more right more so the connectors in line and then when you pull it down move that around like there in that way yeah. nope. that way you gotta try and feed that through at the same time now don't be using any solid objects because you can damage this cable really easy and I've done it myself and that's it just pulled through and that's it through now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be rerouting it. We're actually going to be taking it back through onto uh, the other side. So a couple of options you can do with that is if you just move the compass cable to one side, taking the same cable, and then again, if you can, basically what you're trying to do is just make it into a, a kind of shape. Oops, too far, not too far enough. 
like a shape like that and then you can feed it back through the undercarriage hole and just pop that like in there pop it through now if you're going to poke it through be really careful that you're not poking on the wire itself you just give a wee help and that's our through flip it over and you should be able to see that now coming back through the hole now you may want to just use just grab a pair of pin nose pliers like that and then you can just get your pliers in there and basically pull that through okay next job we're going to have to do is we're going to have to just take the two uh, receiver mounting holes one there one there we just need to take those screws out just unscrew them and that one and basically like have your board like that now I've actually already plugged in one of the cables so you don't get confused if you just check out the orientation you can see where the short cable goes and then it's just simply a case of feeding it back under these are actually the receiver S bus cables just line the holes back up put the wee screw in there and then you can basically just screw that back down obviously don't go tighten it completely up because you've still got to line up the other screw and then you can put that one in there and then screw that one down this one obviously you can nick up I mean don't go mad it's just mounting screws so just nick them up and then this one now is actually ready to be connected now that is it's actually labeled if I, if I can put it up a bit closer you'll actually see that it's actually marked next to the connector socket it says Zen Muse there okay now we're going to uh, mount the first Zen Muse cable in now if you look closely at the cable you'll see that it the pinholes are actually off to one side and the Zen Muse socket has got the similar sort of thing so make sure that you pre-line them up now, to give you that little extra length of cable, I just tend to already pre-bend the cable over like that and then just move all these cables down a bit. We can drop that in place, line it up, and I just give a wee firm push with my nail and it just clips into place. That's that cable down. Now, the next one is the actual Zenmuse feed cable, which is now going to be going there. Now, same again pins are lined up to one side these are lined up to one side so you might just need to pull that through a bit it's okay to do that because you can pull it back through at the other end so again I just tend to bend the cables over like that and that way you can lay it on and then just clip it down and then just to neaten that up you can just pull that back through like that and then that's your done make sure that cable doesn't sit over there because obviously that's where your GPS cable uh, from the main body shell is when you come around to putting the body back on remember to plug that back in again okay time to put the body shell back on as I just said remember to put your uh, GPS cable back in now I always touch on this because I have seen people do it especially when you have the body off completely when you put the body back on if you haven't already got your stickers on make sure they align as in you can see the little little flat bits where the stickers go on, make sure they align on both sides because if you have the body shell say 90 degrees out um, you're going to really know about it it will absolutely freak out the first time you fly it so basically body shell back on flip it back over and then put your mounting screws back in right okay that's the body all back together so the next step is is actually to fit the gimbal but as i've already covered that in my other fitting of the new h3 3d gimbal uh, there's no point in going over it again you can just switch over to that video forward about halfway through and then you can pick up uh, from fitting the other method um, of fitting the interference board as say both systems work absolutely fine there's a bit more guddle 
doing it in this manner, bringing out the cable up on the other side because the cable originally came out there. So there's a wee bit more of a guddle, but if you kind of want it screwed in and you don't want the cables maybe pulled quite as tight, then certainly that is the other method. And it is now actually the method that DJI, who strangely enough don't include the instructions uh, with the gimbal, but if you actually go to the website, you can download a, a PDF of the instructions on how to uh, fit it. But if you've just watched this video, you won't need to. Uh, so thanks uh, once again for watching my videos. Now, if you have any ideas of videos that you might like to see, uh, or things that you want to know how to do it, and if I've done them, I'm more than happy to show you how to do it. Uh, just pop it into the comments box and. Um, uh, and once again, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you really like it, you can share it with your friends on Facebook. And um, you can subscribe to my multi-rotor channel, Marionville Multi-Rotors, or certainly for, visit my website at uh, marionvillemodels.com. Proper bricks and mortar model shop for over 40 years. Uh, thank you.